Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, this is going to be quite an adventure. Here we are standing in the town of Castaic, right off the 5 freeway heading north. Right. And I'm standing here with Joe and Tony Suffredini. There's Mrs. Suffredini over there. And the, the baby's name is? Little Logan Suffredini. Little Logan Suffredini. That's a good Irish name, right? right. Yeah, right. Suffred <laughs> Italian, <laughs> Paisan. Absolutely. And I got an email from you recently. And actually, after we got here today, I found out your wife is actually, She's she really wrote cool. it. You signed it. Right. And you invited us to come out here to Castaic to your house for what reason? I wanted to give you an introduction to the ancient art of falconry. Falconry, That's right, which falconry. is a very ancient art. It's been around for hundreds of years. This is the way most people used to catch all the game before guns were invented. So, yeah. Okay, we're going to see. We've, we've, we've got a real treat in store for all of us. I've kind of nosed around in your backyard. I have an idea of some of the stuff that's back there. Before we go to your backyard, let's walk over here and see Haley, the famous movie dog, because you were telling me that he's had quite a career himself. He's semi-famous, retired now. He uh, had a short stint on the series Full House, and um, he was a puppy in the do in that movie Fluke. Uh -huh. So he just uh, was a little high strung for the movie business, so he retired early. All right, so now he's just kind of guarding your baby and your wife, and I mean, he's a great dog, right? He is, great dog, <laughs> great with kids too. And he Perfect. loves to play the, with the ball, and uh, basically he just kind of hangs out here in the yard in Castaic. That's right. That's what uh, is happening to the movie dog. What's in the backyard is a whole nother ball game. Now we're getting serious. Yeah, let's walk back through the garage to what you've got back here because this is a, let's watch our heads right here. This is a whole nother world back here. The art of falconry, and here are the falcons. That's a saker falcon that we're looking at on the ground here, and that's a what? A saker falcon. A saker falcon. Right. They're from uh, they're from uh, Middle East, and then the other guy's a lantern falcon. They're from Africa. Now, how close can we get to these falcons? Because I can't tell whether. That's a, a noise from a happy falcon or a falcon who's a little upset that we're here. That's a happy falcon. That's a falcon that wants to fly and wants to be with us. So they're tied up so they can't get to us either. Okay, now can you go over and pet it or talk sure. with it or how does this work? Mm -hmm. See, I raised her from a little baby so she's talking to me. What is she saying to you? She's saying, uh, feed me or fly me, do something. Let's take a closer look at this, Cameron, because this is a beautiful, beautiful bird to look at, and what a wonderful sound. She's pretty amazing. Oh, wow. Now, sitting right next to her over here is... That's Tuck. He's a lantern falcon. He was one of the stars of the movie, um... Uh, Stuart Little 2 that's being released this summer. Now can you, uh, th this one seems very quiet. This one's a little more quiet and a little more um, high strung. Oh, look at the wings. Look at this. Let's get a tight shot. Look how he's bringing his wings out a little bit here. Beautiful little bird, huh? Now these were, uh, are these basically from Europe? Or are they? All the birds I have are all captive bred here in the United States, but they're originally, or not originally, but to find them in the wild, they'd be from all over the world, mm -hmm. the birds I have. They're all exotic. Except we got a shed guys. here. Now, <laughs> Haley doesn't get upset, and they don't get upset with no, him? They were, they were, they were uh, brought up together, so they all, they all get along. <laughs> all right, let's go inside, because I've seen this one. This is a beauty. Now, this is one of the birds. This is one of the birds that we practice falconry with. This is a Harris hawk. A Harris hawk. Oh boy. Now this is this this isn't a falcon. This is not a falcon. This is a hawk. And Can you go in and, and get him on your arm or do something with it? Oh, you're putting that thing on your arm. Oh, let's bring him out. 
to handle uh handle all birds of prey you have to wear what's called a gauntlet here to protect your hands from these uh, very sharp and powerful talons they have. Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful bird. Now how do you get a comfort level with a bird like this? Because I got to tell you, I'm, you know, I think the average person would get a little nervous holding a bird with a look in its eye like that one has. Right. Not that it's a mean, ugly look, but it's, I don't know how you read them. How do you learn how to read a bird like this? And let's get in here, Cameron, and get a shot while, uh, while Joe's telling us a little bit about this one. I mean, that's part of falconry, is you work with the bird and the bird works with you, and together you develop a partnership that you can go out and hunt and catch game with. And so it's really, it's a really time intensive process to train a bird and to get them used to you and you used to them. So it's just a lot of time invested, really. Now, in the old days, and I guess that, you know, falconry, to me, when I'm thinking of it, goes back to the 1500s, 1600s, right. the middle, 70, ages. middle ages. Middle ages. Would a falcon, would a hawk be a prized possession that someone would have? Yeah, absolutely, and absolutely. And it's, currently, it's still the same way in the Middle East. The, the sheiks and the Arabs still prize falcons over all other possessions. So it's still around, you know, you know, in the United States, few of us practice falconry, but it's it's a it's a sport that now keeps is it on going. legal to hunt with them? Yeah. Do you have to get a license, a Ab permit? Absolutely. The, the permits and the and licenses um, are pretty intensive. You have to have a state license, a falconer's permit, and a federal permit, and you also have to have a state uh, hunting license. And how many falcon permits do you think there are in California? There's probably around 500 falconers in California. California has the biggest population of falconers. And without getting too personal about it, I don't need to know the exact dollar amount, but uh -huh. are these expensive birds? Yeah, yeah, they're expensive birds. Okay, give me an idea of how uh, much this. This bird's worth about $600. That first one we looked at was worth $3,000. Yeah. And they can fly away at any time, so. It's a little bit scary sometimes. Now, how far, so in other words, now there's no way I could get any closer to this bird than I am right now, right? She's a little nervous. She's a little nervous, you know. They're always gonna be wild animals, even, even when you train them and tame them down. Okay, so let's put, let's put, and her name again is? Whitney. Whitney. Right. So you've named them all. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, now this is just the beginning because we've got three more right out here, and, now, wait a minute, this is an owl. Yeah, that's a little owl, that's a tawny owl. Let's go in and take a look at this. Look at this little owl. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Cute little guy, Look huh? at that, Cameron. Now, that is a beautiful bird. Oh, now, see, I don't think she likes Haley being here, the dog. He's not, he's, he's pretty new to this area, to my yard. He usually hangs Can out with Tony. Can you pick him up? Tony, do you want to talk to? Tony, yeah, we hadn't asked there. your brother to get involved in yeah. this. You, you all are kind of partners right. in this We're thing? We're partners in this thing, and Tony actually trained this bird, so I'll let him tell you a little more about him. So, Tony, when you get a bird like this, do you get them as just a little bitty baby and, and yeah. start training them right away? Yeah, owls especially um, um, are real um, instinctual animals, which means um, they don't ever really tame down if you were to just grab a, a wild one. They, they would have a tough time with that. So. The only way to really train an owl is to get it as a, as a little baby, a little wow. fuzzy baby. And I did that with Groovy, that's his name, about four years ago. Now see, this is a bird that I can relate to. <laughs> I mean, this is a cute, fuzzy little, this could be a pet for someone. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a wild animal. And they don't really make very good pets because of some of the requirements. And uh, an owl like this stays up all night long, sleeps during the day. So unless you have a big yard and they can get away from your your uh, your bedroom window. You're mm -hmm. gonna be up all night. So long. they're making noise all night. Yeah, well, they sleep at day and then are up all night. And he bounces around and you know carries. So on now wait a minute, we're waking him up right now. Yeah, yeah, basically. He's usually so we're sleeping not gonna right hear now. him hoot. Now yeah. he only hoots at night. Yeah, yeah. He makes some really crazy noises, out of this world noises, actually. That, like, can you? I'm not. Can you give me an idea of what it? He does a lot of screeching, like. Uh, just constantly, and then he does a uh, sort of a warble sound. There, he's making it right now. Oh, listen to this! And then, and then when it's dark out, he makes an, another noise that uh, there's no way for me to <laughs> to do. Maybe that's the mating sound. It, I, it's a good chance that is the mating <laughs> sound. 
All right, let's move on over here because what have we got over here, Joe? This is a saker falcon just like the other one. The only difference is this is a male saker falcon. And so a male falcon or any bird of prey, the males are a little bit smaller than the females. Mm -hmm. That's how you can, can you tell the difference. Can you pick him up? Absolutely. His name is? This is Squeaker. Squeaker. These are great names you've got for them. Oh, look. They're such majestic birds. Yeah. Fastest animal on earth right here. Can go 200 miles an hour straight down. And they prey mostly on other birds, pigeons and ducks and pheasant. Wow, I bet you don't have an excess of <laughs> songbirds in your yard, do you? Yeah, I don't have a lot of ducks hanging out around here. <laughs> oh, now here's a big one down here. Right, right. This is Marshall. That's an African auger hawk. Wait a minute, a what? African auger hawk. Can, now, you get a, get him, can you get over there and turn him around for us? And uh, That's a... Let's bring her over here so we can get a nice tight shot of her. Oh, look at that wing, that wingspan. Now, why is she flying like that? That's... She's just, uh, just a little bit more high strung. And, mm -hmm. But uh, if you guys watched the Super Bowl this past year, um, you might recognize her from the Bud Light commercial. Really? Right, right. This is the this is the actual bird. One of the birds. There was three that we used, but now could I pet this bird? Um, yeah. Let's try it. You just well, wait a minute. What do you mean? Let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if she. No, you know, probably not. Yeah. I got another bird you can pet. Yeah. Not the one over here. Well, well, we'll see how. Because how this is are. this is the piece de resistance. Uh -oh. The the you know what got me here <laughs> was not your email, the but picture. the picture. Okay that you included in the email. We were taking it all over the station, showing everybody I have never seen a bird that big on somebody's arm before. He's actually uh, one of the only scenarios vultures I know that, that will work on the arm. Otherwise, they usually just work on the ground because they're pretty, pretty they're big. Huge. Gigantic. So big that and when we got here, I ask you to keep him in the box because I wanted to be surprised when I saw him the first time. Uh, I want to, are we ready to take him out of the, the box? Listen to him in here. I get the door. Come on over here. This, look out. What's going to happen? Wait a minute. What do you mean? Could get ugly. No, he's cool. Come on out, big guy. Oh! Oh my gosh. This is Dexter. Dexter is a serious oh. vulture. Oh, he's so. a vulture. Can yeah. we get him out in the sun out yeah, here? Oh my gosh. There he is. Now that is a face. Look at this face up here. Come on in here and let's get a shot. Look at that. What's his name? His real name is Dexter. Dexter. It's a cenarius vulture, and they're also known as European black vultures. And they're probably the third largest flying bird. He's got close to a nine foot wingspan. You know, he looks in a funny way almost like a condor. You know, they're, um, condors um, are uh, what are considered New World vultures, which means, you know, they're South American or, or uh, North American birds. The birds that come from Africa and, and the old country um, have a completely different evolutionary track. And they, they do the same thing, so they have a lot of the same um, characteristics, but um, the condors and the turkey vultures and the black vultures that are found in the, in the New World here um, are, in, are in the same family as uh, storks. Now, how heavy is this bird that you're holding? You know, he looks like he's a brick, but, um, you know, he's a bird. He needs to fly, so they're, they're, they're built for light, lightweightness. And, that's and what does he eat? He probably eats anything he wants to, doesn't he? Small children, cats, dogs. <laughs> Oh, come on, you're going to get people <laughs> upset out here. He uh, eats, he eats uh, meat. Is it dead meat? Dead he meat. only eats dead meat. Right. That's he eats where a lot the of vultures. A lot of rabbit and a lot of quail and pigeon. And Oh, my gosh. And do you use him? And what's he? He's trying to get his strap off right. his leg. He's just messing around with it. Yeah. Do you use this one in movies? Absolutely. He's been in a few movies. Oh. He was... <laughs> You got to understand, <laughs> this is new to me. Absolutely, he's a little bit now, intimidating. Now, there's no way I'm going to put my hand out here, is there? Um, Give me a watch. If you were wearing a watch, Huel. I'm wearing a watch. All right, put your hand up like this. Watch this. Hey, 
see this is what he's going to do. He's not going to touch your skin. He just wants he just wants to peck at the watch a Come little bit. Come on in here, Cameron. Let's get a shot so, of this. You ready? Oh, oh, oh. See? That's uh you're braver than 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 we were told. He'll <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. What a weird feeling on your arm. Right. And that's a powerful beak right there. He, if, you, if you really wanted to, he could have ripped the watch right off of your arm. But uh, he's pretty gentle. I, I hand raised him and trained him. And uh, What do you mean a powerful beak? I mean, I that, got scared the dog down here. I didn't know what this was down here. I mean, look at that beak. It's a big can opener. And he can look at really, this. it's really built for opening up the thick hides of um, cattle and buffalo and whatever else they eat that they find dead in the world, in the, in the wild. Boy, that is an amazing... Let but me I, do it one more time. I'm right. kind of getting into this. Surprisingly gentle. Now, he's not after mine like he was yours. You didn't mine's, raise a little, mine's a little shinier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he likes the shininess, too. I think that's what he's keen in. And on. that's fine. I'll let him have your watch. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. This is very exciting. And here's Haley just standing here totally unaffected by the whole thing. He's pretty fearless. He's, he was raised around these <laughs> wild animals. And what we're going to do right now is leave your backyard right. and go just up the, the field here uh -huh. and show how we'll you, you work with falconry right. or the way they would have worked with them hundreds of years ago. You use these falcons in movies and television shows. I use them in movies and television. I'm also, uh, I also take some of these falcons to landfills and chase seagulls away. So I've just started doing that kind of you work. You mean they hire you to they do hire, that? They hire me to chase the seagulls away. And the falcons are the natural enemy of seagulls. And so just the presence keeps the seagulls away. So the seagulls can feel the vibes of these oh, falcons. Yeah, they're terrified of falcons. And I know they could feel the vibes of this <laughs> vulture because, boy, I am looking at that face right now. It looks like a big Muppet, huh? Whoa. Pretty amazing guy. Now, we're not going to take him with us, are we? No, we're going to put him up on we're his gonna perch. We're going to put him back in the perch. And his name again is? Dexter, the Cenarius Vulture. Dexter. <laughs> oh, he's after your glasses. <laughs> yeah, better in my eyeball. That's why I wear the glasses. <laughs> uh oh, he's going to take that. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> he's gonna, he'll eat it. He'll eat it. <laughs> Now, this is very interesting. This looks like something from the medieval days right now. You've right. got a hood right. on this falcon. To be honest with you, falconry has changed very little since the Middle Ages. This the looks thing, like what they would have worn in the 1500s. This is exactly what they have worn in the 1500s. And what's the, what's the purpose of putting a hood on it now? It keeps them calm and quiet and relaxed. And so you can take a wild bird or a bird that's afraid of stuff and you can hood it and, and all the fears go away when the lights go out. And then you just continue with it until it's fully trained and, and it's just much much easier to, to handle and manage your bird that and way. And look at this. I don't know whether the camera can pick it up, but you've got a little plumage on the top right. of the hood. Right. So it's a whole thing, isn't it? Right. Hood making is an art in itself. And uh, I don't do it because um, you really want the hood to fit nicely. So I have some people that, that make the hoods. And wow. And you've got a little transmitter on this Falcon. She's wearing a radio transmitter that, can, uh, that emits a signal up to three miles away. That way, if she does fly away, which is always a possibility in falconry, the birds can take off. They're free to go. If they don't want to come back, if we're mistreating them, they can leave, fly away but um, they always choose to come back. But if they do go away and we want to find them, we can track them well, with Would this. you say this is a $3,000 bird? Yeah, $3,000. Yeah, I'd go looking for right, it. She right. went off. And you were telling me as we were walking up here for this little demonstration, and we're going to get to that in just a minute, that you, the side of your truck down there said pest abatement. Right. And you had talked about how you're helping keep the landfills, keep the gulls from the landfills. Right. But there are other things you do as well. Yeah, you could take you know, the falcon. You could take falcons to airports and keep the airport safe from birds flying into the, the engines of the airplanes. And also vineyards um, hire us quite a bit to keep the pest birds away from eating all the grapes during the growing season. And you told me that the birds, the falcons, don't really get to eat that many birds because right. just their presence. The other birds can sense it and right. stay away. Just the presence of the falcon intimidates the little birds away. 
So it's really... So they're instinctively afraid right. of these falcons. They know through the they generations. Know. They know. As soon as the falcon takes to the air and they see that silhouette, the wing beat, they just panic and head north, you know. And this is a natural way to have pest abatement. Absolutely. It's kind of like the, the, you know, a cycle of life thing. Absolutely. It's, it's much more effective. It's quieter. It's more media friendly. And so there's a lot of advantages what to using. What do you mean media friendly? Well, people don't like <laughs> hearing the noisemakers. And to really keep birds away, you really have to make an unwa unwelcome atmosphere for them. And these guys really do the job. Just in a natural way, just flying natural. around. Just or flying just away. sitting there, maybe. Just sitting there, just flying, just being in the area, just there, you know, just having the bird of, of prey in that area. Yeah. Now, what's going to happen now? And you've already warned. Cameron the cameraman that he's gonna have a hard time because th these birds fly very quickly. Right, the very fast bird to follow. How fast? This bird will probably be going in excess of 90 miles an hour. Really? Yeah. All right, so what's gonna happen? So I'm just gonna unhood her, we're gonna put her on that post and I'll call her off and I'll be swinging what's called a lure, a swing lure, and the bird will see that and it's kind of a cat and mouse game. It has food in it. The lure has something it, in it for the bird to catch and eat? No, it doesn't have food now. When I first started training, I had food tied to it, but now it's just become a game. And he knows when he catches the lure, he gets rewarded for catching it. So <sighs> that's the way it was All trained. right, what's gonna happen? We're just following you right now. All right, well, you guys stay here. I'm gonna put the bird up and then I'll, and then I'll call him off and then you guys can film, okay. film what he's doing. So he's just kind of gonna put him on the fence, Tony. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, he wants to be able to, he needs to get a little bit of distance from the bird, and the uh, bird needs to get a little distance so from he's him. he's got to, the hood off now. Yeah, now he's free to go wherever he wants. There's nothing tying him down. Um, and so now we're just gonna see what she does. She'll take off and circle around a little bit, and then. <laughs> oh, look. hear the wind, the wind uh, rip through the wings as, as she comes by. Let me get a close one here. <laughs> now, is she trying to hit the thing that he's swinging? Um, yeah, she is, and Joe's trying his best to keep, it, to keep her from doing that. Now, if she does touch it, then the rule is he has to give it to her. So he's, he's pulling it as fast as he can to keep it away from her, and she's flying as hard as she can to get it. See, I've lost her now. She's Where? up this way. Oh, she's up she, here. She gets a little height. And the natural hunting style falcon is to ring up high wow. above, <laughs> ring up high above the prey, which is usually another bird. And then um, when the bird flushes, the, the falcon folds up and comes down what's called a stoop. And uh, you know, fa um, falcons can hunt from you know 2,000 feet up, and they come straight down at over 200 miles an hour and just. Now look, it's going straight up. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a little wing over action. So Just they've got around. amazing abilities to maneuver. Oh yeah, um, the, oh, here, the, here it comes. The g-forces of, of a falcon coming down um, put any jet fighter pilot to shame. Um, they can turn on a dime, going 200 miles an hour, which it would kill. It would kill, kill the average human being as far as Look the g-forces. Whoa! Yeah, she touched it. She so got she it. it. Yeah. There she goes. Oh look. Now what's she doing with it? Now She's spread out over it now. That's called mantling. When uh, when they catch their prey, they don't want other birds will come in and try to take it away from them. So she'll cover it up, camouflage it with those brown wings of hers. Usually it's going to be in some bushes, and uh, she'll keep it covered until she's eaten as, as much as she wants of it. Now you're going to get it, uh, get 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 the bird to bring it back up here to you. Yeah. Look at this. Come on, honey. Bring it here. Boy, oh yeah, look, it has to drag it up that. Yeah, the um, swing ha lure has a little bit of weight to it, so that um, it, 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 uh, it's kind of like what she would naturally be preying on, which would be a bird about that size. Um, but they can, they can take birds um, larger than themselves. You bet. Wow. And you're giving it uh, some, oh boy, we don't want to get too tight on this. She's getting some raw meat to eat now. She's eating some farm-raised quail. Whoa, and that's her reward. That's her reward for catching a lure, and it's also very high-quality food for her. They have to have such high-quality food when they fly like that. Boy, boy, she eats, she makes quick, 
uh, work of that too. She's chowing down. Wow. You know, this has been an amazing thing to watch. I don't think very few people watching tonight, I know I certainly didn't know anything about this sport. It's in many ways very obscure, isn't it? It's very obscure, very rare. Um, people kind of keep a low profile. Um, I do it professionally, but most people it's just a hobby. Mm -hmm. Just a hobby. But it's a, it's such an old thing. It's such it has such a rich history right. to it. It has an extremely rich history, and that's one of the that's one of the neat things about it. You know, you, um, very few things have changed, and you just really just really follow in the footsteps of many many other falconers that have done it for hundreds of years. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Thank your wife so much for inviting <laughs> me. Let's shake hands. I don't want to. Thank you very much, and we might notice, in case you all haven't noticed, we're talking about some twins right here. Can't tell one of you from the other. Uh, can the falcons tell you apart? Um, I'm not sure. Whoever has some food for them. Oh, probably yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this is amazing to have watched. Thank you very much for allowing us to share this ancient yeah. art of falconry. I find it fascinating and exciting, so I hope you guys did too. Well, I know our viewers did. I know we did, and uh, I like the falcons better than the vulture, I hate <laughs> to tell you. <laughs> the vulture is a whole nother thing. You were telling me you were going to pick them up, Huel. I don't know. <laughs> Wait a minute. I didn't ever tell you that, did I? <laughs> Somebody told yeah, me that. Yeah, I told you that. I just thought I'd let you, okay. you know, have that moment. I understand. But the, the vulture in its own way they has a serve, rich history. They and serve a purpose as well, you know. They clean up the environment and eat the dead stuff, and somebody's got to do it. Yeah, this is all natural. It's all natural. It's a circle of life, and it's, it's, really, it's really neat to be part of it, really. It's what yeah. I enjoy. Well, we've enjoyed being part of it Great. today. Out here in Castaic, with these wonderful falcons and that ugly old <laughs> vulture. I'm gonna tell him you told him that. <laughs>